Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's CITI program webinar. Today's topic is why sex matters from research to patient care and is presented by Dr. Kim Templeton from the University of Kansas Medical Center, Dr. Jan Werbinski from Western Michigan University Homer Stryker School of Medicine, Dr. Caroline Paul from NYU Grossman School of Medicine, and Dr. Sharon Hunter from the NIH Office of Research on Women's Health. Learning objectives for today, uh, we're going to understand, hopefully by the end of the webinar, the concepts of sex and gender and how they differ. We'll discuss how the exclusion of dis sex disaggregation of data and research impacts patient care, healthcare education, and the development of the next generation of researchers. Dr. Hunter will describe the intent and impact of the NIH sex as a biological variable or SABV policy. And then at the end, we'll discuss how institutional review boards, IRBs, those groups with which you work at various medical institutions can prospectively impact the inclusion of sex in research proposals and especially the dis disaggregation and reporting of results by these variables. Thank you, Dr. Templeton. And now Dr. Warbinski will begin the presentation. Well, greetings, everyone. I'm so honored to be here speaking with you today about sex and gender specific research, education, and healthcare. So, what's the difference between sex and gender? Precision terminology is paramount. It's so important not to conflate these terms. Sex is based on biology, chromosomes, and hormones. So sex assigned at birth is usually determined by the sex organs present at birth. The typical terminology here is male or female, but we also include intersex individuals in this term. Gender, on the other hand, is based on socially constructed roles and behaviors that a person adopts. The typical terminology here is more expansive, masculine, feminine, LGBTQIA, non-binary, and other expressions of gender. Gender is limited to humans. So we should never see the term gender when we're reviewing animal research. Animals simply do not have a gender. Way back in 2001, 22 years ago, the Institute of Medicine commissioned a white paper and it was named Exploring the Biological Contributions to Human Health, Does Sex Matter? They determined even then that differences have been found in nearly every organ, condition, and disease. So we're talking about a discipline that extends far beyond gynecology, which covers only reproductive health and illness. The conclusion of the Institute of Medicine was that every cell has a sex. The SABV policy was established to close a knowledge gap. There are three facets of this knowledge gap that are as follows. First, the default human model was a 70 kilogram male and, and included the assumption that first, that fundamental biology included only shared molecular, biochemical, and physiologic characteristics. And this assumption is kind of a level of protectionism and paternalism, if you think about it. Uh, because for example, it viewed the fact that women had an estrous cycle as a sort of a confounding variable in research studies. Another knowledge gap is that there was a preponderant use of males in preclinical research. And this type of unisex research, you might think of it as trying to hit a bullseye in the dark. You might hit the target, but not the bullseye. And this degree of randomness really is too high for medicine and is really not consistent with rigorous scientific investigation. And third, and perhaps most important, with the default human model as a silly 70 kilogram male, there was too little research on disease and conditions of women. In addition, I invite everyone to review our content offerings regularly as we're continually adding new courses and webinars that might be of interest to you all.